first of all thanks for being here in my youtube channel so here is the third video that is a third revision class video that is for this year ibbs exam so already we have seen two live classes as well as two revision classes as well as two in-depth solution the questions that what we solved on the live class so here is the third revision class that is on the topic compound interest so previous video previous revision class that is based on simple interest so we have solved 20 question on the live class as well as i have given a test other than right the concepts what i thought in the live class the same related concept 20 question so i have given as a test and then we have gone with the video of in-depth solution of all the questions what we solved on the live class so here is the third topic that is on the compound interest so usually i always recommend if you are going for ibbs not only ibbs if you are going for any bank prelims exam not mains exam right bank prelims exam 99 percentage do not try to attend this question initially right initially do not try to attend this question at last if you have two minutes of time or if you have three minutes of time at that point you can attend the compound interest topic or else do not try to attend the question initially why because when compared to simple interest compound interest is little bit calculative part will be huge for example why i am not saying to attend this question right why i am saying not to attend this question initially the problem here is it's a formula similar to simple interest we apply all the values in a formula and we are going to get an answer compound interest also does not have any huge concepts like simple interest but only problem is solving a question alone the multiplication part alone might take you one or more than one minute or even some calculation part will take two minutes also so at that two minutes in the prelims exam you can able to solve two questions on other topics like problems on ages time and work time and distance you can crack that all those questions in one minute but compound interest is easy but the only problem here is the calculative part will be i for example if, when you apply all the values in a formula sometimes you can able to see these kind of numbers so 107 into 107 into 107 divided by 100 divided by 100 divided by 100 right so we have to what we need to do is we have to multiply all the numbers 107 cube and then we have to multiply with the 9621 example i'm saying and then you have to divide by 100 100 100 so most even some experts there are chance of making a mistake on multiplication even though you know cube shortcuts or all the shortcuts but this calculative part might take one minute to solve Right, at least 40 seconds to solve so that's the reason i'm saying initially miss leave this compound interest and try to attend all the remaining topics and then if you have extra time attend the compound interest but sure compound interest is not a difficult topic it's an easy topic only because of this kind of calculation i'm saying not to attend this topic initially that's the only reason and it's your wish right if you are strong on compound interest you can but if you are a beginner level or an intermediate level do not attend the question initially and uh, there is a question called simple interest as well as compound interest the question contains both simple and compound interest yes you can attend initially if the question has only simple interest yes you can i'm saying that if the question is 100 percentage only compound interest do not try to attend the question initially that's it right so now getting into the concept of compound interest yes anyway we are going to learn i'm going to teach all the concepts some questions will be easy i can tell you which questions if you find these kind of question you can attend if you find these kind of question do not touch it right so now when you take a compound interest topic we have two formulas like what we learned in the simple interest so one important formula compound interest is equal to p into 1 plus r by 100 power n minus of 1 and then we have another formula total formula that is p into 1 plus r by 100 power n so this is for the total uh, amount for calculating compound interest total amount including principal as well as interest and this is only compound interest right so same this formula we will apply on some other area in the concept called population decrease or population increase 
if you already watched my compound interest video kindly you know all these concepts if you didn't watch my compound interest video visit my youtube channel right in the playlist you can able to find compound interest so there i have posted seven videos on the topic compound interest starting from lesson number one introduction how to solve a question by a normal method traditional method as well as by a shortcut method shortcut method is like a percentage method we apply percentage here to solve a question so three different method i have taught you but most probably going with the formula method will be easy or else going with the percentage method or a traditional method is easy traditional method is always easy even in a simple interest and a compound interest but sometimes always learning a formula will help you to solve 100 percentage of the question right so lesson number one is the introduction lesson number two we have solved basic question three and four that is based on a concept called half yearly quarterly and then population based question and then t1 year t2 year that is also the most important concept on compound interest so totally i have posted seven videos on the topic compound interest right do not forget show you the image here you can able to find on the playlist so don't forget to watch all the seven videos if you watch all the seven videos sure shot you can able to attend 80 question if you take any books and try to solve you can able to solve 80 percentage of the questions the remaining 20 percentage if you know the concept you too can that too you can easily you can able to solve it right so here so telling about you the about the formulas two formulas important formula on the topic compound interest so this formula alone we use in the compound interest as well as we use in the concept called population increase population decrease for example in 2001 right in 2001 the population was 1 lakh in 2002 the population was 2 lakh right similarly sometimes they will say the population is 1 lakh and in 2003 what will be the population if every year the population is increasing 10 percentage they didn't give you this value they will give you 2001 this was the population and what is the population in 2003 and every year the population is getting 10 percentage increased so what will be the population at the end of 2003 so for that we use the same formula a equal to p into 1 plus r by power n in case if the question is based on from 2003 to 2001 right if from 2001 to 2003 it's a forward thing so if it is a forward thing we use a formula if it is a reverse for example in 2003 the population was 1 lakh in 2001 what could be the population if every year the percentage has been 10 percentage decreasing so what could be the population three years back so in those cases we use the same formula a equal to p instead of writing here we divide 1 plus r by 100 power n so it's understood that's the only difference here so if it is after n years we use this formula before n years we use the same formula but here p divided by that's it this is the only change that we make in the formula in order to find the population increase and population decrease and one important thing if the population is increasing 10 percentage 20 percentage increase then instead of r we substitute positive 10 positive 20 if the population is getting decreased every year if the population is getting decreased 10 percentage decreased by 20 percentage then instead of r you have to substitute minus 20 if it is increase plus if it is decrease minus right but the formula remains same only applying the values might change the formula thing right so plus or minus that is depend upon whether population increase or population decrease so two important thing that we learn from this formula right and then if you take a compound interest topic so where you can able to see uh, if out of 100 percentage 50 percentage of the question will be on the concept called quarterly half yearly quarterly concept half yearly concept most important concept in compound interest even in the simple interest i didn't th thought this much quarterly or fully on my youtube channel why because on simple interest quarterly or awfully does not make any huge change in the answer because simple interest you know how we usually calculate it is easy but when we take a compound interest we have to add the interest with the principal again and then we have to calculate the for the next year so that might make a huge change in the answer you can't just like that calculate it so you have to be very careful if the question that is based on compounded awfully or compounded annually or else compounded quarterly and most importantly 
in the compound interest in the question they won't give you whether you have to solve this question by compound or fairly or compound quarterly that will not be given you have to find whether we need to solve this question quarterly or you have to solve this question half fairly you have to think and you have to solve that's the thing what i thought in lesson number 3 and lesson number 4 so two videos that i have posted only on the concept of quarterly and then half fairly and quarterly Okay, that is most important. For example, when you take a uh, principal as twenty thousand, example I am saying principal twenty thousand, rate of interest is eight percentage per annum, and time duration will be thirty months. If you see these kind of question, principal twenty thousand, rate of interest is eight percentage per annum, time duration is thirty months. Here they have given a interest in terms of annum. Right, but that is for one year. But here our target to find the time duration for thirty months. How to split the thirty months? So this thirty months can be split into twenty-four month and then six month. Yes, because twenty-four plus six will be thirty. And this twenty-four month you can split into one year, one year and six months. So one year the rate of interest is eight percentage, and for the next one year rate of interest is eight percentage. So six month will be half yearly. So instead of finding eight percentage per annum, you have to find for half fairly divided by two, which will be four percentage. So friends understood. For first year, you need to find what is the rate of percentage for eight percentage, and then for second year, from this interest adding the interest to the principal, for second year you have to find what is eight percentage. After at last, you have to find half fairly. Instead of eight, you have to go with four. So if it is a quarterly, for example, quarterly means you will get around twenty. Uh, uh, 27 months if it is a 27 months you have to go with quarterly and right? you have to divide by 4 the rate of interest should be divided by 4 so these concepts complete concept i have taught in this two lesson that is lesson number 3 and lesson number 4 right so that is most important in most of the compound interest question they own say that you have to calculate half yearly or quarterly we have to think and we have to split the given months into a proper year at last we will have some months remaining that month should be calculated whether half fairly or quarterly we have to think and we have to solve the question that's the main thing in the topic compound interest so other than that compound interest is not at all a difficult topic initially itself i have told you what's the why main reason i am telling not to attempt but when you compare with the simple interest compound interest is little bit calculative that's it but all the concepts will be same and this quarterly and half fairly i have thought in all the three methods one is a formula method for quarterly we have a formula for half yearly we have a formula but if you don't want to learn all those formulas then you can go with the traditional method in this video itself i have solved each and every question by a formula method as well as by traditional method a traditional method how to find the answer so try to learn both and check whether which is easy for you and which suits for you so and then you can able to solve the question usually uh, going with the formula on quarterly or half yearly might feel easy because Not a new change in the formula. The same formula, p into one plus r by hundred power n. So instead we have r by two divided by hundred two n. That's it. We add additional part here. So because of half yearly, we have to divide the rate of interest by two. So half yearly the time will be two times. So two n. If it is a quarterly, r by four, four n. That's it. Only two formulas that we have: one for quarterly and one for half yearly. So it is your wish to apply uh, to uh, what to say. to solve a question whether you can completely your wish whether you can go with a formula method or you can go with a traditional method it's completely your wish right so other than this no we do, we have one concept called t1 year t2 year t1 year t2 year what i thought in last lesson lesson number 7 on the same seven lesson videos on the last lesson alone you can able to see this concept t1 year t2 year so that is one one concept that will very easy to solve we have to frame a equation for the first data and some years will be given for that data we frame one equation for the second year we frame another equation and then we divide both the equation to get what is the principal or what is the total amount that is one of the easy method to solve these kind of question in case if you find these kind of question in the prelims exam you can attend first why because that is easy just we need to frame a equation and we need to divide to find the answer right so that is easy so if you find a question like this for example they have given a principal and they have given a rate of interest and our target is to find after 3 years what will be the total amount we are getting so at 
the question looks very simple, but only problem is the calculative part, right? If you are if you are strong in multiplication, you can go with it, or else attend at the last, right? So friends, that's it. So I think I've just uh, taught all the important concepts, just a revision class. So day after tomorrow or a Saturday, we can have one live class that is on the topic compound interest. So there we will be solving 20 important questions. So after that, I will give you a test on the topic compound interest, right? So friends, that's it about the compound interest topic revision class. So if you are first time learning the compound interest, kindly watch all the seven videos. At least just I think each and every video will be 20 minutes or 15 minutes. That's it. Only in one and a half hour, you can able to watch all the seven videos. So first try to watch all the seven videos. The concepts are, <coughs> the concepts are more important. The basic traditional methods are important. Try to watch that. Understand all the concepts. Definitely you can able to score good mark on simple interest as well as compound interest in the prelims exam, right? So next video revision class will be on simple and compound both. I will tell you some important formulas are there uh, diff by giving a difference of simple interest and compound interest. We have to find what is the rate of interest. Those kind of thing are very interesting. So next revision class I will, I will tell you that. But here in this revision class, we have gone through all this compound interest important concepts, right? So thank you so much for watching this video. So see you on the live class soon. So thank you so much. Bye.